Hello, I'm Linda Cundy. I'm an attachment-based psychoanalytic psychotherapist, and I'm here now to tell you about a training day that I will be running for Brighton Therapy Partnership on the 2nd of April, 2022. The subject of the day will be working therapeutically with clients who would be described as having a, an avoidant or dismissing pattern of attachment. And these are people who are often um, quite difficult to engage in therapy, um, very difficult to keep in therapy. And I often feel that they're a rather neglected group of clients, um, unlike the, the more acting out, um, highly emotional and perhaps obviously traumatized um, clients who, who get a, and demand a lot of attention. So I'm very keen that we, we think about these more often more invisible individuals and think more carefully about how we can help them. That said, a lot of therapists don't particularly enjoy working with these clients um, and find them rather unrewarding and sometimes rather domineering or, um, or critical, whatever. So I would just did a kind of mental brainstorm of the kind of language that often gets used about someone who is, if you like, the, the dismissing category of attachment. And here's a, a little list I've just prepared. Cold, unfeeling, aloof, shut down, cerebral, perfectionist, lifeless, workaholic, on the spectrum, usually said by their partners, Narcissistic, arrogant, private, shy, hidden, not capable of intimacy. So we can imagine that covering a very wide range of people and their presentations. Clearly, these are people who have difficulty making intimate relationships, trusting relationships, really close, warm relationships. But other than that, they don't seem to have very much in common from the very arrogant, perhaps bullying, um, officious type to the very shy, very private, almost invisible individual. I believe anecdotally they are, if you like, underrepresented in many kinds of therapy. Um, perhaps that wouldn't be true for such approaches as CBT, um, but there are reasons why somebody who is avoidant would be reluctant to engage in a long-term therapeutic relationship with somebody um, where matters of dependency might come up. So in the occasions they do show for therapy, um, experience often tells me that they've been sent by somebody, usually a, a disgruntled partner or the point at which a relationship is breaking down. Not always, but often. So this day that I will be presenting um, is going to, I hope, help us understand more about this client group, not only their difficulties in relationships with other people, but perhaps more fundamentally, the difficult relationship they have with themselves. And I'm now going to attempt to screen share here so you can just see this little list of what I hope and intend to cover during the day. So here we are. I would hope that by the end of the day, we all have a better understanding of the range of defenses and how and why these defenses evolved as I said before, a, a better understanding of the nature of the relationship that these clients have with themselves, which is often a very critical, punitive, um, self-harming kind of relationship, almost sadomasochistic at times. I will be arguing that the core issue, one thing that unites a very broad spectrum of presentations, is the issue of shame. And that shame is self-perpetuated often through attacks on the self, 
things that people do to themselves and tell themselves about themselves, or else that shame is manically avoided through intense activity um, or, or various other ways that I will outline on the day. I will be um, describing a whole spectrum of avoidance from the very mild, barely perceptible um, defences right through to the extreme, and also looking very briefly at what happens when someone with a core pattern of avoidant attachment is also dealing with unresolved trauma. And then I will move on more to what this looks like in therapy. Um, how we begin to tell that somebody has this, um, this particular internal dynamic, if you like. And we'll be talking a little about assessment and how we can perhaps a little earlier have a hunch about someone's pattern of attachment and why that might be important to, to have a sense of it early on. I'll then talk about the therapeutic relationship and some of the difficulties that arise there. And what we might need to do in order to make this um, a reparative experience for these clients. And then finally, and perhaps most importantly, I will be talking about the aims of, of attachment-based psychotherapy and the particular areas of focus that are important to hold in mind when we're working with this client group. So this is really something you can take away for supervision and self-supervision um, to reflect on your own client group. So that's the aim of the day. I very much hope that you will be able to join us um, either in person, which is very exciting and I hope will, will be possible. And for those who can't come in person, then it's also possible to join um, live streamed online. So I'm just going to stop my screen share for a moment so I can say I hope to see you there. All the best.